It's that time again. I'm back. Took a week off. Had some personal stuff to take care of, but I'm back, baby. And it's the Mojo Pod Show. And we're here with episode 13 with Just Win Johnny from OneNationFanWare.com. And we're talking all things Bo Jackson. Y'all ready? Because I'm ready. All right, man, let's get into our beer today. We got Syntax Imperial Peanut Butter Stout from Mother Earth Brewing Company. Uh, Mother Earth opened in 2008. Uh, They're from Vista, California, just north of here. 2012, uh, that's when they started kind of expanding and started uh, distributing the beer. Um, and then they kind of started blowing up. So in 2016, they opened up their second brewery location in Boise, Idaho. Uh, a lot of Californians are moving out that way. I guess they followed the trend. Uh, their, their, their place in, in Vista is still open. They have a tap room there. They have their brewery there, and they also have both in Boise, Idaho. It's a family-ran business. The website said that they were owned and operated by two baby boomers and a millennial. Uh, it's probably some interesting uh, brew days over there. So the Syntax Imperial Peanut Butter Stout is an 8.1%. Uh, percent. Uh, it has, uh, let's see, it says, tasting notes, big and bold, balanced roastness, browned sugar with all natural flavors added. And they got like a little hot devil chick on here with some, Some handcuffs. Check her out. Yeah, what up, girl? Um, Hey, man. Let's do this. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm, You can actually hear some good stuff here. Listen. Getting that buzz. So it's pretty carbonated. You can see that. Smells great. Oh, yeah, it smells wonderful. So, I'm a fan of peanut butter stouts. We'll get into that in a second. Let me taste this thing. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. 8.1, though, so got to be careful with this bad boy. They come in 22-ounce bombers. Uh, Good bombers. I'm tasting espresso, I'm tasting toffee, I'm tasting caramel. It's got kind of a dry finish. It's good. Uh, so I looked at the grain bill on this. So obviously they're just using uh, one one thing of Saz hops. Uh, but you look in here, their grain bill's got a, quite a few chocolate malts on it, which makes this thing just delicious, man. It's like a, uh, it's like a really good dessert beer, man. Oh, um, and they also have brown sugar in it, so. Let me get this. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's good, man. Yeah, it doesn't have any kind of a, a bitter aftertaste. It's just a really, really good Imperial. It's a good stout, man. Big fan. Check them out. Mother Earth Brewing Company. They got a bunch of other good beers. Um, but hey, you know, not to plug another, you know, brewery. I don't think any of the breweries really give a shit about what I'm talking about. But man, there's another really good uh, Imperial Stout, uh, peanut butter stout, over from Belch and Beaver in North Park in, in San Diego. Man, they're pretty good. But I'm gonna say, uh, Justin, my my beer guy, over at Keg and Bottle, you were right. This is better than peanut butter stout from Belching Beaver. Cheers, Raider Nation. Mm. Don't forget to tag all your posts, all your Twitter posts, and at Raider underscore beer. You do a you do a review and we'll get you on the show.
What's up, y'all? This is the Condor, Max Crosby. You're listening to Mojo's Pod Show. Just win, baby. Shout out to you, man. What's up, Raider Nation? I'm here with my boy, Just Win Johnny. You know him, man, from OneNationFanWare.com. What's up, bro? What's up, brother? We uh we all been talking for a minute, man. Uh, you know what? We had to put a pin in this for a week, but everybody knew we were getting ready to do a Bo Jackson tribute show, like a like a late mm-hmm. '80s, early '90s throwback. Mojo knows Bo. You know, let me let's get them graphics up, Johnny. What, what about this right here? Mojo and just no, Johnny Bo. knows Bo. We're gonna talk all things Bo Jackson. We're gonna take some voicemails and we're gonna chop it up with Just Win Johnny. Johnny, man, before we get into this, uh, to this Bo Jackson, one of our both of our favorite subjects here. Let me, yeah. uh, why, why don't you tell everybody that subscribed to my my little pod show uh, where they can find you on the socials, bro? Uh, you can find me at um, One Nation Fanwear. This is the uh, streetwear fanwear company for Raider Nation lifestyle brand that I started, and you can find me One Nation Fanwear on Twitter, Instagram. Also on Facebook, but I really don't moderate that page. Check it at all as often. So if you want feedback and indirect with the brand, it's usually Instagram and Twitter. And now a lot of stuff is starting to go on Reddit, but I don't really push it on Reddit. Other fans of the clothing just share it with people. But that it brings up an important subject because that I don't I come from the advertising world and I don't believe in like really like hammering it down people's throats and pushing it on them. One end was created as an arm of Raider Nation just to use the talents I have to like, you know, improve us as a fan base versus all other fan bases out there. You know, Raider Nation is the best, baby. Raider Nation is the best, man. And I'm going to tell you the best gear is One Nation fan wear because <laughs> I'm always rocking my shirt, man. I would have wore a shirt, but I found it more appropriate to yeah, rock my Bo Nose shirt tonight, man. But no, yeah, you're... I got I got all kinds of One Nation fan wear yeah. gear, man. I've been buying gear from you for a minute, bro. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing, too, is that coming from that world, there's so many people that just take recycled graphics, slap it on something, a cheap shirt. And I'm not here to rip off Raider Nation. Like like I said, I'm a member and I started getting sick of getting all these shirts and they were shrinking and everything. So, you know, I hone over it. I, I'll wear a shirt. If I test the new shirt product I'm going to put my art on, I'll wear it for six months, wash it. I'll wear it every day of the week and wash it every day of the week to make sure that thing's going to hold up for Raider Nation. Like, I... I'm a detail freak. It, it's obsessive. <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah, hey, hey, Raider Nation, I can vouch for the detail freak, man. So, you know, me and Johnny be collabing once in a while, man. <laughs> I hit him up with something, man, and I'll get like, uh, I'll get version, you know, 7.0 30 minutes after I got version 1.0, man. He's always going to clean it up a little bit, man. Detail oriented to teach uh, attention to detail. He's the man. He's the best in his craft. Check him out at OneNationFanWare.com. Yeah. So let's talk about some Bo Jackson, homie. Yeah, my favorite Raider ever. My favorite, my favorite athlete. My favorite American yeah. athlete, bro. Yeah. That's in I mean, most people know I'm born and raised East Coast just outside of the Bronx. I'm a Yankee fan. And <clears throat> my career and everything has taken me up in California, all over the place, Vegas. And slide, um, slide over a little bit there, Johnny, because uh, the graphics has got you covered up, homie. There you go, right there. Vegas and everywhere. And I used to be proud as a Yankee fan to be able to say the Raiders were the most winningest team in all of sports, even over the Yankees. And I used to burn people up in New York, the Giants fans and everything. But it's, you know, and he was a big part of that back then. You know, although it was on, you know, the downslide after Madden and all that, but. He was a big, uh, when our team was kind of bleak and Al Davis was trying to give a little oomph to it, he brought this man in. He did. He brought him in. And, you know, Bo uh, uh, originally got drafted by the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but since they screwed him over mm-hmm. and, and and screwed him out of his uh, last year eligibility to play college uh, sports, um, he, 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 he screwed him. He said, you know what, I'm going to screw Tampa. <laughs> He's like, all right, well, I'm just not yeah. going to play, man. I'm going to play for Kansas City Royals, man. So uh, did a great job there, too, man, because my man was, uh, you know, a, a first ever, only ever two-sport uh, all-star, right? So he made the Pro Bowl and he made um, the MLB all-star game, which is unheard of. It's never happened before. 
Bo Jackson, yeah. man. Yeah. That, listen, I remember being a kid, and I'll show you guys. You guys want to see? I'm going to tell you the mojo. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing, man. So, Bo, you know, we're getting we're going to mm-hmm. get into some stats, and we're going to talk about some Bo Jackson stuff, man. But I'm going to tell you that guys that are that are our age, Johnny, right? You, yep. There's Michael Jordan, and there's Bo Jackson. And, and, yeah, it, okay. and if you're a hockey guy, there's Wayne Gretzky. But this is it, man. Like, Bo Jackson was – yeah. people won't understand. If they didn't live through the Bo Jackson thing, they're not going to understand it because this was before, you know, Sunday ticket. You couldn't watch football unless yeah, it yeah. came on, you know, local TV. And as soon as Bo got drafted, the Raiders started coming on regular – everyday television yeah. in every corner of the of the of the country just because they have Bo, man. And he exactly. was running through people's that, faces, not man. That, not only that, they were polishing the Monday night primetime crown because they would wreck people on Monday night with Bo Jackson. Right. Like it was, that was when we were just on Monday night it was a guaranteed win, like for the Raiders. They were just kings of Monday night. Bo. Oh. So here you go, guys. This is uh I'm going to give you a little something right here, man. This right here is uh, Mojo back in like 89. <laughs> right there. <laughs> right there is the bow. This is Bo knows. Shit right here, dog. You know, I got my no fear sweater no fear. on, bro. I got, them, I got them sleeves rolled up just right, bro, with the Casio on one arm. And then I got them friendship bands on the other, dog. Like mad friendship bands. Look at that. Yeah, and you get you, you, picture, and then they started making the jelly ones that people would weave. Like, look. yeah, bro. I want to know is how much did you pay the stormtroopers to stand behind you and blast those lasers off? Yo, man, I was gonna mention it, man. So coming from a coming from a uh, you know a, a graphic designer and artist, you know, what are you thinking here of the background that they were throwing down in the public schools? Back in eight, 1989, bro. What are you What are you thinking about this pick, man? Did it, Did my photographer do me justice? Yeah, usually they're a little more wild. You remember there'd be red, blue, and little hits of purple in that that, that classic one you always see. Yeah, it should but be wild. I actually like that one because it's like it looks like neon blinds. To be honest, that's what it looks like. <laughs> it looks like blinds, right? Like window blinds, bro. Look at that, dude. And I wonder, like, what, bro? What was my day like that day? You know what I'm saying? Cause <laughs> you definitely weren't reviewing any beer, dog. I woke up, man. I took a shower, man. I got to school. You know, like what was going on in in my brain those days, man. Look at that, dog. Like I was probably wanting to listen to some Bell Bib DeVoe and take, uh, you know, take a little girl to the to the dance or so the sock hop. Is what we used to call it. Mr. Telephone Man. You know what I'm saying? Like, My life. <laughs> New edition, dude. The OG Bobby Brown. Yeah, man. You know them songs, man. They come on, man. It's the last It's the last song of the dance, man. You know, you got to oh, find that yeah. special little girl over there and, and get on the floor, man. <laughs> Yo, as long as I had that little bit of a mullet, you see you see under my ears there in oh, that photo yeah. right there? You know, that's how you know you're going to get a dance, though, right there, dog. <laughs> you hold on to those. <laughs> Dude, I'm wearing my jupe. You know what I'm saying? I'm wearing that jupe cologne, dog. Like, I'm, I'm getting yeah, after it. Shortly after Boss and Cool Water and everything took over, we were probably in, like, you know, middle school going into high school with that Jakar Noir. Yeah. So there you go, Raider Nation, everybody. <laughs> Enjoy that right there. Drink that in for a second right there. That's how you know that my old lady, man, Libby here, she got she she got a catch, man. She's a, she's the winner, man. She we, she's like the, the the bachelorette, bro. Look what she look what she got. She's gonna bring you a sword instead of a rose. Speaking yeah. of a sword, dude, who you got that, dude? The foam. Yeah. From the stadium, dude. You ain't ready the nation unless you you've been there and got your the ass. Kid, the, the kids have to have that one, man. My son, every time, man. I think he's got like four of them. Hey. Yeah. Let's talk about some real Bo Jackson shit. So, you know, Bo, Bo's, his real name is Vincent, right? Vincent Edward. And the reason they call him Bo is because they from Alabama, right? And they said that he was like a wild boar hog. Yeah. So you could see, you know, like his his cousins and his and his siblings and everything saying, you know, he like a bow hog. 
You know what I mean? Them country yeah. people, boy. So they they said they that's that's why we know this dude as Bo Jackson, man. They said he was uh, a little bit mischievous as a kid, man. And there's a lot of tall tales about him. I don't know if you've seen the Thirty for Thirty on ESPN. That's one hell of a Stop. show, man. It's my favorite it. one. That record, it's in my DVR. Stop yeah, it. man. I, I recommend that for anybody, dude. You, gotta, you know what? I, I like busting that out when I'm in a bar and people start arguing me and bringing up Walter Payton and everything. And then I just play that and it goes through like every credited ESPN analyst saying Bo Jackson was the best to do it. And it's all in a row. So I just let him be here. Look at this. Yeah, man. Heisman Trophy winner, dude. He, you know, he got the Heisman Trophy back in 85. What were you doing in 85, Just when Johnny? Oh, so I was drawing on stuff, walls and stuff. <laughs> Getting yelled at by my father for graffiti, probably, <laughs> and Legos. I was playing with, uh, I was pre- I was probably playing with some GI Joes and some, uh, and some Transformers, dog. Yeah, that too, Voltron. Voltron, yeah, man, oh, that yellow dude. lion, dude. Bro, I just found Voltron, another designer. You know that I dabble in in like Lego art and sculpture and stuff like that. You've seen some of the stuff I've done. Yeah. They, some dude made Voltron like a f- spitting in dude. I had to buy it. It was like spitting, spitting image it, uh, out of Legos, dude. It was like it's amazing. <clears throat> so it's a, it's a Lego Voltron, like the whole, like when the oh, when the lines yeah. would come together. And the line comes off, and you could play with it, articulate it, bro. I'll show it to you. Oh, Stop. Stop. It's Stop. Dude, it's, oh, it's pretty. It's sick. But. I gotta catch that one. I gotta catch that. You gotta send that Stop. to me, man. So Bo Bo was born in 1962, man. So he's 50. What 57? Is that the math? 57, 58, something like that. Um. My man is six foot one, a little bit shorter than me, and he weighs two hundred. Well, he in his, you're in his an in, artist. Wait a second, you're asking an artist to do math. Yeah, I'm sorry, bro. That, I'm sorry. Dude. Ask Murph. <laughs> so yeah, let's not ask Murph, man. We don't want we don't want to do that math, man. But never do public math. Never do never do uh, do math on a on a pod show, man. On the YouTube's, um, six foot one, two hundred twenty-seven pounds, man. So that's not that's a big boy. You know what I mean? But that's not... Uh, that right there doesn't make you a, a, a freaking superhero because this guy was the closest thing we ever seen to Jarrell, right? Like, this <laughs> this is this is our Superman, right? The only person to ever get close enough to, to Bo when it comes to athletic ability um, of note, right? And there might have been some people that never made it that were just as athletic as yeah. both these guys, but... Uh, you know, it, it was certainly um, Jim Thorpe. Jim Thorpe was a multi-sport athlete before pro sports were, you know, a big yeah. deal. Yeah. Today, conglomerate. So I, I got some I got some uh, stats here. Um, obviously, pro bowler. Uh, we talked about his Heisman, right? Uh, my man was all American, all SEC, all that good stuff. We we all know that. And mm-hmm. he was drafted um, round one, pick one in 1986, man, uh, by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He never yeah. played. And uh, he then, uh, in 1987, Al Davis and him worked out a deal to where he could uh, focus on baseball and football, and he could show up to the to the uh, to to football after the baseball season was completed. Um, his his career was cut short. Keep that in mind. Um, he played from 1987 to 1990. That's probably why he touches my heart and just when Johnny's heart and the majority of the people that watch my little show, man, like he was he was the guy, man. Um, it's funny when you look at his stats, man. We we remember it so much differently, man. We remember it like Paul Bunyan, right? So he's got 2,782 rushing yards. He averaged 5.4 yards per carry and 16 rushing touchdowns. Um, incredible, man. Uh, he was drafted in 1986 by the Kansas City Royals. Um, yeah, 250 batting average, uh, 141 home runs, um, and he had 415 RBIs. He played for the Royals, he, he, and then after the injury, he came back to play for the Sox. 
Andy Angels. And uh, we mentioned it earlier, he made the all-star team in 1989. Yeah. So, dude, I wish he played for the, the Yanks, dude. I have a Bo Jackson <laughs> Yankee jersey. Well, you know what? That's funny, life. man. You know what? That's funny because... Um, they wanted him in the beginning. They, they did. So Steinbrenner, I read a story... Steinbrenner went, uh, either called his mom or went to, you know, went to Bessemer, Alabama and talked to him. One of the two, I think it was a phone call. And she said, I don't need your money, dude. I don't care about your money. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they, yeah, he did. The Yankees didn't draft him, man. Because his mom was like, no, I don't like that. When he was holding out on uh, on Tampa, they they were, Steinbrenner was gunning for him. Like, all right, you're not going to play. We'll take you this and that. And so, yeah, it's greatest damn. greatest athlete, man. Uh, I mean, and not even that. Just to think, like you said, of that era, that time was it was the mid eighties into the late. It was just like that time was just amazing. It was the best, dude. Like you said, Transformers, He Man. Like, it was just uh, Apple computers were starting to get big. Like it was, it was just it was a whole different time, and. Much different than today's technology. My man had a, uh, he had 82 stolen bases. Yeah, he was fast. Well, obviously, but. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. Running up the wall like Spider Man. That's the other thing. Eight years, man. With size. And granted, there's another fact that he didn't work out. He didn't. They had, people had to like force him to work out. work out. He was naturally like that. When he showed up on like the Nike photo shoots, and I know that stuff. I'm an advertising guy. They, they would use these case studies in college courses about Bo Jackson and Nike and tell it like a case study, they call it in the business. And they would show that case study and the photographers and the art directors, he'd show up and they, they were like, he didn't, we didn't have to tell him to do anything, pre-pump, touch them, nothing. Cause usually they'll have, I'm on photo shoots with athletes. You make them pump, you make them work out a little yeah. bit. They glisten them, they spray them. I'm not gonna say all the secrets cause I've had to rub athletes down with Vaseline. It's not fun. Well, hey, hey <laughs> Let me let me recenter this thing, man. So tell me, uh tell me your fondest Bo Jackson memory. Oh. Um man, there's so many. There's so many, but I'd have to say the best two the tunnel, when he ran into the tunnel, and Boz. Running over Boz was has to be. Yeah. I mean, his douchebag haircut and all that and running his mouth. Running his I mean, mouth. And this, I mean, this game was set up like a heavyweight match back when boxing was boxing, you know, and there was heavy eight heavyweight fights. Well, I mean, you got to think in the, in the late eighties and early nineties, man, that was, that was my, Mike Tyson was the King, bro. Yeah. That's a whole other argument that I've had with people that they're like, they won't put him in the top three boxers. And it's like, are you insane? He changed the sport. The dude changed the sport. So get out of here. You could hate him for what he did, this or that. When you're talking about boxing and what that dude did, he changed the sport. And he had motherfuckers in fear. No one wanted to get in the ring with that dude. So no one. And so. So so I'll tell you my favorite, man. My favorite Bo Jackson memory was playing Super Tecmo Bowl. Uh Uh-huh. (laughs) <laughs> that's my favorite <laughs> Bo Jackson memory, man. Because you get in there, man. Everybody fighting. I'm gonna be the Ray. I'm gonna be Oakland. I'm gonna be Oak, or I'm gonna be LA. I'm gonna be LA. I'm gonna be LA. Man, you get LA. Guess what, man? Win. It's you an automatic win. The They're just following you <laughs> all the way. You just zigzag home, bang, 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 all the way. It didn't matter, man. You could just you could run the clock out and then score a touchdown. That's, yeah. Yeah, that too. I mean, they the programmers gave him a little bit of that, but that just also goes to show the Bo legend that dudes in Japan put it made him like a superhero in that game. You know, like that just goes to to show like the legend of it and how it was. And I gotta say, the the field I come from, advertising and marketing, they helped the legend a lot. You know, yeah. Granted, it was there. The seed was there. So I was I was gonna go with the. I, I was going to go into the injury, but let's let's do it, man. Let's hop into um, our. I want I, the reason I got you on this show, man. The reason I wanted to do Bo with you is because as good of an athlete as Bo Jackson was, the greatest American athlete of all time, arguably, um, his him and Nike collaborated 
and had one of yeah. the most successful campaign ad campaigns ever. So I want to get your take on the Bo Nose campaign. What can what can you tell me about? I, I know it ran um, late eighties, early nineties. Uh, the Bo Nose thing, you know, he was doing all the different sports and you know auto racing, and he had Bo Diddley on there, and you know, you know all that good stuff. And I got I got my uh, I got my nineteen ninety one uh, Bo Cross trainers in the closet right now. Man, I had to have them, you know. Dude, they re released them too in um, like a gray and black color. Uh, I have it somewhere in a box here. I can't even wear them. They re released them in like Raiders colors. Dude, they were there was as an artist, I love them. They're unique. There was a little fugliness to some areas of them, to each their own. I mean, they were, but I just can't wear those things. I love them and I can't put them on my feet because I, I don't want to ruin them. They mean a lot to me. Like, I, I don't know. And I'm a sneakerhead, dude. I, I'm, and toys. I'm not one of those people that keeps it in the box. So that's different. I'm a packaging designer, so why the hell am I going to keep something in a box that I designed? Right. I, okay. Those things I throw out. <laughs> like, so, but I mean, it's the lore of him, dude. But for the advertising thing, he, like, there would be no Michael Jordan icon or anything the way it is today without Bo Jackson. Fact. Well, absolute fact. And like I said, that's what they teach you in college and case. There's case studies about that specific advertising campaign. Because it just kicked the doors open to, to a whole new, not only the multi-athlete thing, but cross trainers and training sneakers. That never was around, and that it opened a whole new category. Like nowadays, you see, when I was doing package design, we went through the kale phase, the pomegranate phase, the f***ing earth is on fire, let's f***ing make everything green phase. Like, these are all, this is what I mean, that's what I was trying to explain at the beginning of the show. Advertising is a very evil, greedy, sinister world that only cares about money. They do not care about you. They talk about caring about you. They say little things about the product about you, they, but they wrote, they don't. So, and it's for his, the, he changed that whole, like the way that campaign went, changed that whole industry and kind of put it on his head because he was such an outstanding, honest guy. You saw like he wouldn't want to go to Tampa Bay. He stuck to his guns. He he wouldn't do things that weren't ethically in line with him and his personal brand. He didn't even see it as a personal brand. You know, they no, that was it. before that was a thing. Now we got, you know, eight year olds that are working on their brand, bro. <laughs> so yeah, this is before there was a brand. This is all before social media. Nobody had, uh, you know, there's not too many. Well, I don't think anybody had the internet in their house, right? Yeah, I know. I mean, I think people just started house. getting cable TV, you know, when this yeah. went down. I um, mean, back then, computers were still like the size of a room and they had like air hoses and it was binary and there would be actual like balls that would go in and out of the hoses to block the binary code. Like, <laughs> dude, I'm not kidding. My dad was a mechanical engineer. I used to go in his office at Perkin Elmer and it was like a huge machine. And it's a computer. Like, I'm like, what the? So, I remember that as a kid. So here's a question for you. Do you remember... The cartoon with Bo Jackson, Michael Jordan, and Wayne Gretzky called Pro Stars. Now that you mention it, yes. I can visualize like the end or the in between the commercials, the stupid little like, kids info stuff, the G.I. Joe kind of crap they used to do. The Pro Stars, so dude. Cool. Pro well, Stars, know. bro. Yeah, because the, the animation style instantly popped in my head. Check out they made check out the so mullet easy. on check out the mullet on Gretzky, dog. Yeah. Dude, they made Michael Jordan look like Kareem Abdul Jabbar. They made Michael Jabbar. Jordan they made Michael Jordan look like um made him look like uh Jimmy Walker from Good Times, bro. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's even better. Dynamite. Yeah. He it, right there, he talking about Dynamite. Look at that. Yeah. And then Gretzky yeah. got that ill mullet, yo. And Bo looks nothing like Bo in that picture either. His face. No, nah, Does he have a mustache? Does he have a mustache? No, nah, I don't think he's got the stash, man. I just think that's just... <laughs> they made him look kind of chunky, man, because he got that he got that flat top. You know, he was rocking that. We all had flat tops back then. Here he is right here. here, here, here here's Bo right here shooting baseballs at, at a bad guy, bro. <laughs> What's the fuck? That's... Hey man, anybody younger than like twenty five watching this right now, man, this is <laughs> this is kind of we had to watch when we were a kid, dog. 
Oh, dude. I don't even want to get into like the masks now. Like kids can get movie props. Yeah. Well, I was oh, Boba no. Fett when I was six years old and it was a yeah. garbage bag that they printed on and they would take a paper plate and draw on it and give you a rubber band, dude. You know those costumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, I know about I, I that. Probably, yeah. Right here, man, I'm going to tell you, I was probably <laughs> right there. I'm going to say I was probably rocking for Halloween. Let me think, man. So I'm probably, I'm probably 11 there, maybe 12. I was probably a werewolf <laughs> and it was some Stop. shit where my mom is like, <laughs> like Bo Jack shot you with a baseball <laughs> <laughs> and my mom my mom bought me some my mom bought me like a werewolf mask or something man and like some fake <laughs> fingernails and then she I remember man she glued I don't know where she got like this fake hair man I hope it wasn't like random pubes or something man like I don't know <laughs> but she she like glued <laughs> All this hair, man, all over my face and neck and on my hands and shit. You better pray she to get that hair from like a YMCA bathroom. Or Yo, some man, shit. I hope, man. Maybe she went over to my maybe she went over to my boy Jim the barber, man. So we had a guy named uh, Jim Haycock, man. He might even be watching this, man. Uh, Jim the barber in Lucas, North Carolina. Man. Everybody went to the same barber shop. I hope I hope he didn't go over there and sweep the floor up, man, and make me uh make my <laughs> make my werewolf uh, costume. <laughs> You know, from Jim the Barber, dog. Let, 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 let me get let me give you a term. I want to know what, what you think about that. Do you know what this means? Avascular necrosis. Yeah, well, I would think it's when like the vein or something rips or a blood vessel and yeah. it dies off. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, and that's what happened to Bo's hip. He says he popped it back in. Uh, it was dislocated against Cincy back in 91, man. Um, I don't like talking about this because I remember vividly. Dude. I remember the injury, but, you know. I remember I, watching it, dude, and looking to my father, and being who's a diehard Raider fan, and being like, dude, dad, is he going to be all right? Like, is it, like my superhero uh, was just, like, killed. Oh, yeah, he's going to be And my fine. father just, like. First he goes, yeah, it's Bo Jackson. He'll be all right. It's Bo Jackson. And then you just saw, you were like, hmm, that ain't right. <laughs> and then it sunk in, dude. And it was like they knew when he was going off the field, people knew it was bad. Like, And that ended that ended his tenure with the Raiders. That ended, ended his football career. Uh, he also um, got cut by the Royals in spring training following that. And then not until – the end of the 91 season did he get uh picked up by the white Sox and he played for them in the 90, yeah. 92 season yeah that's when he cranked the the grand slam yes sure. he just came back from i know he just came back from surgery so it was like he was rehabbed that's the other thing too back in the day is you you had to wait for Bo. When the dirt on the field started going away that time of year, when the, when the diamond on the 50 was gone. That's Bo, when he came oh. out. I'd be remiss to uh, not bring up Bo Jackson's 40 time at the combine, right? They said oh, that you got to move, yeah, you gotta you, move this camp. You good. Second. Do what you got to do, big dog. I'm going to talk about this 40 right here. So, so Bo, um, it is said that he, he ran a... 4.1340. Now, this is uh, before, you know, all the, when we timed everything, you know, all the digital, you know, timers and stuff like that. It was clocked and all that stuff, but. Before the underwear Olympics, basically. Right. And, and the 413 is still, in 2020, the fastest 40 time ever recorded at an NFL combine. So you tell me why, why uh, Al Davis let him play baseball <laughs> oh yeah you know I'm saying? yeah you know i know why but it's just like it was such a different just era of the sport man and that, and that also added to the hype of like what he did let's move over what he did in that era was just it was amazing it was amazing and that's why his legend lives on like it does today and like dude i even catch myself talking about him sometimes like he's dead and he's not obviously he, he's alive and it's just he you know he lives his isolated more private life now but he's a living legend like 
I don't gotta say that. Everyone knows that, but it's just the aura around him, and that's what made his ad campaign so good. It's just it was special. It was special. Bo was, uh, you know, a special athlete, man. He still is, man, and he does a lot of stuff, man. He's got he's big into charity, man. He's got the Bo Bikes Bama, right? It's three hundred miles. It's like a Tour de France kind of thing in Bama. Um, um, he used to visit the towns and stuff uh, when when they would get you know torn up by tornadoes and stuff down in the, on the Gulf Coast. Um, yeah, this dude is you know he's the guy, man. Um, he raised over a hundred point one million uh, for uh, the Alabama gov- governor's emergency relief fund. Um, he owns a so this is this is pretty cool. So Bo Jackson. Uh, lives right outside of Chicago in one of the suburbs, and he opened a bank. So Bo Jackson is, is a banker, man. He opened a, yeah, like a mom and pop, you know, small time bank there, man. And it, yeah, yeah. And then uh, you know, one thing uh, that was weird for me, man, that I that I noticed. I don't know. Did you watch the college uh, football championship game this year? Uh, yeah, I was not paying attention. So at halftime, they they did like the top ten like all time, you know, college football players, yeah. and Bo was like number three or four or something like that. And um, man, they had everybody out there. Man, he was the only guy that didn't show, dude. The only guy. Well, that's my point. Is he doesn't like you know he's not he doesn't like it. Like, he, doesn't, he doesn't really. Like, I mean, I get like that with art, so I can tell what he means. Like people are like, oh, you're a freak, you're so crazy, this and that, and it makes me a little uncomfortable. So it's like he's humble about it, which is cool, and it's just not him, you know. It's not the type of dude he is. So um, he's get some. <clears throat> he's just over it, I guess, right? Like, I mean, if you've been uh, you've been the top, you know, one of the top athletes that get people to, you know, to buy your product and and, and watch your games, and everybody loves you, you know, one of the. So, and this is my opinion. I think just the way it ended too it's kind of like unfinished business with him probably you know because he think about it he's got to live with the what if he's not about he was never about wanting to be the best or anything like that but he's got to live with he does have to live with the what if you know I, I don't know dude i don't know if he uh i don't know if he lives with the what no, if cares. that much bro <laughs> Yeah. I don't. I, I yeah. think he. I think his talent is so great, and I think that the guy is such a down to earth dude. When you hear him talk and you see him, and he just. Uh, man, it just seemed like nothing was a big deal for Bo. Man, you know he, like everything. You know when we watched him, all the athletic stuff that he did. You know running through Boz, uh, throwing Harold Reynolds out at home. Man, yeah, I, <laughs> I mean all that stuff was incredible. It was like superhero stuff, but he, you know he didn't pump his fist about it or get get you know lit about it like go like that was just like hey this is me this is what i do man i'm good at this so yeah you know what i mean like i don't know man i I don't think even though i'm a podcaster and i'm a content provider man i honestly think that you know i got notes man i did my due diligence here but i could i learned quick when i was putting this all together that i don't think i can accurately describe my feelings for for Bo, especially as an adolescent, um, just I don't think people can understand what he meant to our generation. I just yeah. don't. Unless you lived it, man, I, I just don't think it's easy to explain because you can't. I mean, you can't. I, I don't think I can put another player today. I can't compare anybody to that. Can you compare somebody, man? Who, who you, anybody? Well, this is interesting, actually. It's not going to be a full comparison, but when I, my dad's a Diet Raider fan, and when we got Josh Jacobs, I was telling him, like, he was going through some health shit, so he wasn't fully tuned in, and I was like, dude, this kid's the truth, man. Like, And my dad will always compare, he'll ask me, was he like Marcus Allen? He's like, oh, like, he always compares to that era, you know? And, dude, when I first saw him run Josh Jacobs in the Cardinals preseason game, and you know, you saw that game. It was oh, yeah. preseason, so they were all going to feed him in the beginning. And you just saw, you were like, whoa, dude, like, this kid is legit. Because he was picking up four or five yards of carry, like it was nothing. Bang, 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 like a machine. 
And you can just see a little bit of that, like, bow fat, that specialness. Like, I don't gotta say it. People that watch Jacobs can see it. That's not more special. Like, yeah, Jacobs special, and, man. He's, he's a special player. I, you know, it'd take a lot for, for me to put him in the bow category, but oh, yeah, that's certainly not but there. Yeah. Little yeah. hints. That's the closest that I've ever, to answer your question, I, when I watched that preseason game and explained to my father, that was the closest I ever got to bow. No, in any, you. Or in the you. NFL. So, and then it was just a little bit of it, but... You know, when you first saw Jacobs, you were waiting to watch Jacobs in that game. Yeah, yeah. That season game. And you were like, whoa. Everyone was like, this dude is the truth, man. Yeah. Like, like I was texting you. I'm pretty sure stop. I was sending you. Stop. I was shooting you messages, bro. <laughs> yeah. The Raider Nation needs to stop bugging out. Dude. We're going to be fine. It's baby steps. Dude. We were we're ahead of schedule this year. Did I get it? That we got a little taste. Yeah, well, we got a little taste, man. We, we, we're ahead of schedule. Every key position we needed and talked about. Every key position was handled and doing well. Perfect got hurt. Abrams got hurt. They, and dude, Abrams and Perfect were a big thing in the middle. We needed that force in the middle and in back there. I played strong safety, I know. And like, it's important, it's a lot of weight in his shoulders. And that dude is gifted and he's a goon. Yeah. And like, that was a big hit. And Perfect was a big hit. Like, and, but the defense still started performing and the young ones started stepping up, you know, like, Every cog in the machine wasn't there, dude. And we don't have any extra cogs yet. We're going to get them. We're working on it. And we got two dudes that are really good at getting them. So it's, I mean, I get it, the hype, and I was a little upset. But I, then you think of reality. You and I had a conversation. I'm like, damn, we were ahead of schedule this year. We achieved yeah. so much. Look at those rookie stats, bro. Look at those rookie stats. Like, Come on, that was record. That they set record with those rookie stats, and it could have been better if the team didn't get banged up. So, we're... hey Johnny, um, before we close it out, man, um, we we did a we did a pretty good long um, kind of promotion there, man. But what you got? Here's what I want. <laughs> I want you to. I want you to. I want you to give Raider Nation a message. And I want you to plug your socials one more time. Tell everybody where they can find you. And uh, let's take us out of here, bro. Well, first of all, Brady Nation, I want to thank all of you that support the brand, have bought clothing. I'm shocked, literally, worldwide. Sweatpants to India, Scotland, London, Australia. Really, yeah, it's I'm humbled. It's, it's about you guys. It really is about you guys. It's not about me. And I want to continue to bring you these high quality one of kind pieces. I want you when when someone puts on my gear, I want them people. It makes a statement, and I want people to ask them where they got it, not to sell more. Everyone likes being when you get that little ego and damn, that's hot. Where'd you get that? Everyone likes that feeling. And as a designer, that's my goal to do that and use that talent to do something positive with it. So this as it grows and it's 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 been growing, like I said, just organically, word of mouth. This year, we're going to kick it up and start doing some ads. But I want to be very transparent. But I, want, I can't thank all of you enough that have helped, supported, Pillaging Podcast, Kenny King Jr., Murph, Watts. I mean, I don't want to leave people out. There's some Raider Dave. There's just there's tons of them. You, everybody, Q-Dog, the whole RFR family. There's so many out there. Big Raider Trucker. There's a lot of people. And it's... I really just want to continue doing what the what I'm doing here for you guys. So thank you. It's going to get better. I promise you I'm going to bring high quality stuff. I will never just make stuff. You know that mojo. I'm not just going to make stuff because that defeats the purpose of what I'm trying to do. Yep. So, yep. and there's big things coming because I was I, in early in the season talking with Nump, checking. I mean, if you don't know about Nump, he's an awesome hip hop artist. He runs Beast Mobile with uh, Marshall and Lynch. And I was talking with them, little rough ideas of stuff. So hopefully I can, and it's not even for my brand. I want to help promote Beast Mobile. I believe in that and what they're doing. And I, I certainly believe in what they got going on at Beast Mobile, man. If you hadn't heard of what they're doing over there, man, check that out. I think it's, uh, I think it's great. And it's not because I'm a Raiders fan. It's not because I'm a Marshawn Lynch fan. I think what he's got going on with that, with with that idea and and that company is good and beneficial for. Yeah. For many, many, many people. So yeah, Another check, check out the Beast Mobile stuff. Hey, before <laughs> before we, before we cut out of here, man, let me let me throw up my uh, contest real quick. Let me get this out real quick, dog. Yo, got, remind me, 
So also drop that luchador mask shirt, dude. Drop the luchador mask. So check this out, y'all. If you've watched my show more than once, man, you know about this contest. We're getting close to about 700 subscribers right now, so that's your update. Once I hit 1,000, I'm going to draw your name randomly with a computer program. There's no no kind of bullshit. I'm not doing anything shady yeah. here. Yeah. And then the winner's name will get drawn. I'll put it out, and that winner will get to choose between either this authentic, alternate, uh, alternate colored Derek Carr autographed Raiders helmet or this Jonathan Abram autographed jersey. It's an authentic, and yep. both of these come with certificates of authenticity. So do me a favor, man. Go, you know, you're on the you're on the YouTube channel. Go on there and um, share this, man. Get it out there. Once we get to a thousand, man, somebody's gonna win it, dude. I mean, and then you know, I might get a wild hair up my ass and draw two winners, and and whoever uh, gets number two gets you know the second prize here. So you know, Yo, that, we'll, uh, we'll see what we're gonna do, my, man. That black helmet is sick. I love it's that. sick, I and it's you know, it's not a mini helmet, right? So you know, I got my John, I got my John Gruden autograph mini here. It's not oh, a the mini. Chrome, the chrome one, dude. The chrome one, one, bro. The chrome one's sick, bro. So yeah. it's not one of those. This is a this is a full size helmet. It's a replica. You know, it's not a field worn helmet or anything. Um, but it, it's a nice one, man, and that is an authentic Derek Carr signature. Both these autographs got done um, at Yo. training camp in 2019. So, yeah, please share this, man. You got to subscribe. Please, thank you. Uh, I appreciate all the support. I got I to share that kind of thing. You know, I haven't really been – I had three weeks of bad health stuff, and my father had health stuff. So, I, But when I get back online, I'll start promoting that too. Yeah, but that reminds me, me the, the all-black um, – color rush because for the draft uh, people like to probably hate stuff all I gotta say hint hint that week of the draft if you like the probably hated gear and you like color rush that's all I gotta say we're gonna yeah, have that's what I'm talking about man stuff so. yeah so I don't know we, we uh I don't know what the deal is with, with me yet I know I'm staying over at um I'm staying at uh the Luxor for the draft right so uh, we hadn't decided if we're taking the kids or not, man. Because, um, you know, we can always get into some good stuff there with family or whatever. But me and the old lady are going to be there for sure, dude. And we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to be doing, I'm going to be in rare form at the draft, bro. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, hey, Johnny, man, I appreciate it, brother. Raider Nation. The Sailor one, Salute. One Nation, yeah. baby. <laughs> so let's get into my second favorite part of the show. It's time to take your voicemails. So we got we got more than normal because I took a week off to, to handle some personal stuff over uh, on the East Coast. Uh, I'm back now. Make sure you guys call 619-736-5813. Leave me some hot takes, man. Let's talk about this offseason. Let's talk about our free agency. Let's talk about the draft. And let's hop right up in this. First call. Let's go. Hey, Mojo. This is Brady Rich. Ready Rich, what's up, big dog? Ready Rich, the triple OG. Onward. Um, I was thinking about, you know, what you said about Tua. I mean, we do have first two first round draft picks. I mean, that got my, you know, a mind just going about it. You know, yeah, we all need a, a really good receiver. I mean, I. I think Michael Pittman Jr. could be a, a solid two plus, you know. I, uh, I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, he'll be there in the third round. So, you know, maybe we could either trade up or maybe just go all defense in the first round. I mean, we need it. Yeah, we do. So, I mean. I don't know, you, you you got me thinking, you know, hey, if he falls to 12, I, w- I would like it, but I'm also thinking, too, you know, quarterback is the most important position in all of sports. Yeah. And if you can get a guy who's going to lead your team for the next 10 years who can be above average, well, not, not only above average, but special... Is that not worth giving up the two first rounders? 
I don't know. That's just what, what I'm thinking. But all right, man, I'm just calling and check in and see what you think about it. Bye. All right, Raider Rich. Hey, man, thanks for calling, brother, as always, from the IE. Uh, yeah, man. So... I'm in and out, man. I'm like a I'm like a crazy girlfriend or something, man. I fall in love with a player, and then I just immediately uh, start looking at somebody else. <laughs> but yeah, listen, um, Tua, I like him, and I think there's no way that we let somebody like that go past us at twelve. Now, when you start talking about trading up, I agree that the quarterback is the most um, important, uh, most coveted. Uh, they get the most responsibility thrown on them than uh, any other player position in sports. I think that if we gave up those two first rounders to move up, it's still, uh, you know, it's going to cost us a little more than that because of the, uh, the trade uh, chart, right? The, 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 the value chart for the draft picks. I think that it would cost us too much. I don't see us doing it. Do I disagree with you that if we have a, a guy who's going to be special and be able to be under center for, for you know, the next decade that we should do it? Yeah, I agree with you, bro. I think we should. And I trust Mike Mayock, and I hope he makes the right decision. Once again, thanks for calling, brother. Red Rich. Let's go to the next one. What do we got here? Onward. What's up, Mojo? What up? Hey, man. This is Adrian, a.k.a. AG Raider, my first time calling. You know, I got to work on that uh, triple OG status. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm just reflecting on uh, this week's uh, Raiders talk. Uh, first thing I wanted to reflect on was uh, Tom Flores. When will he make the Hall of Fame? What do we got to do to make it happen? I mean, is it going to take the Raider Nation to write a, a letter to Canton, Ohio? Uh, the second thing. I want to reflect on is uh, Coach Buckner being fired yeah. and uh, Rob Marnelli being hired. You think there's going to be a uh, dip in production when you think of, you know, the leadership change, you know, trust and continuity? Why wasn't Dave uh, Lippincott fired, the linebackers coach? Mm-hmm. Pretty sure Rob Marnelli has a um, background as a linebacker specialty. I'm going to stop you right there, brother. Yeah, I agree um, with the with the Canton thing. We we man, it, it's time for coach. It, it's definitely time for quite a few Raiders to get in there. I think Cliff Branch should have been a Hall of Famer years ago, uh, and coach should be in there too. I don't know what it takes. I know the sports writers are the ones that vote these guys in. I wake up, guys. These people, I mean, you know, I, I do know, you know, like my buddy Murph says a lot that, you know, the body of work has to speak for itself. What he did with the Raiders is beyond outstanding, being the first Hispanic coach to win a Super Bowl. Um, that as well. Um, but, you know, even though he, he didn't do great up in Seattle, uh, I think that what he did – with the Raiders is enough to get him in the Hall of Fame, and I hope that they get that right. Now, when let me go to the Rod Mel- uh, Rob Marinelli thing that you're talking about. Listen, I, I don't know, man, about the linebacker thing. I don't know if he was a linebacker coach or not. I'll have to look into that and get back to you. I don't, I don't check these voicemails until we're live. I just think it's more authentic whenever we do it like that, bro. So uh, I got to do some research on that, and I'll get back to you. Uh, I don't know if his his past has him as a uh, linebacker specialized. Uh, coach, I do know that he and Gruden have uh, ties from the Tampa Bay trade when he was in Tampa. Rod Marinelli was on the staff, and he he supported Gruden 100. percent And I think that there's a lot of um, well, one he's got the track record right. He's proven to be an outstanding uh, defensive mind, um, and you know I I don't think that that Coach Buck and and, and Gruden have any kind of beef about the way it went down I, I hate that Buck's gone uh, I'd be surprised if he doesn't get picked up in a bigger role with some other team um, but I also wouldn't be surprised if he came back to the Raiders if we found a spot for him uh, David Lippincott you know I, I think the reason uh, he hasn't gotten his walking papers yet is just because he didn't have any talent I mean he had you know Whitehead um, guys that just couldn't cover Right. Um, 
that would be the only reason that they hadn't moved on from him. But uh, enough from me, man. Let's let's continue with your call. Onward. That kind of boggles my mind. Hey, uh, looking at free agency, uh, I really do like Corey uh, Corey uh, Littleton from the Rams, and also uh, defensive lineman Chris Jones. Here's a yeah. thought: If the Raiders were to pick up Chris Jones, who will be the odd man out? Looking at what we have on the depth chart and who we're possibly going to sign again. Um, also, NFL draft. Rookie quarterback sleepers is my prediction. Jordan Love, Utah State. Jacob Eason, Washington. And Anthony uh, Gordon, Washington State. Why not spend a third round on one of those QBs? I, I think they got some uh, promise behind them. But just like everything else, only time will tell. Also, hey, I want to give a shout out to all the Raider Nation uh, vloggers. You, Watch Raider. Hardcore Raider, Gunner, a.k.a. Critique Raider, and, of course, Mikey Raider and Murph. I can keep on going on. But, uh, hey, shout-out to all the Raider Nation vloggers, especially the ones I subscribe to. All right? AG Raider, Raider Nation for life, out. AG Raider, man, thanks for the call. Thanks for the love, too, man, the support from uh, some of the other vloggers, man. Yeah, you said a you said a group of uh, dudes that I am uh, familiar with that we talk on a, on a pretty constant basis. Uh, appreciate that uh, respect, man. Um, I love Corey Littleton. Uh, I've said it before. Um, so, yeah, I'm all in on him. Uh, the Chris Jones thing. So, odd man out. Oh, man, it would either be Benson Mayoa um, or it would be Deion Jordan. And I, I like them both. Uh, obviously, Chris Jones is an upgrade. Uh, see what happens, man. Hey, maybe keep them on and have just some awesome depth there. Um, and spinning a third-round pick on a quarterback – I don't see us not. If we don't take a guy in the first round, we're going to spend one of those uh, third-round picks on a quarterback, somebody that Gruden and Mayock fell in love with in the offseason. Hey, man, thanks for the call. Get a couple more in, man. Let's get that uh, Let's get that triple OG status. Onward. Hey, Mojo, this is Ray DeBon Rico. Tried to call in you a little bit less intoxicated than the last time. Yeah. Uh, listen, I'm going to open a beer, having it with you. Cheers, man. And, uh, yeah. Sorry. I was having a taste. And, um, I know you're making a show about J- Bo Jackson. Well, uh, I got to call because, uh, this is one of the most important figures in my life. Because I born in Italy and, uh, lived in Italy and, um, I born a Raider, but I was introduced in the in the football by my uncle who was an offensive lineman of the Eagles of Ferrara which is the city where I born and um, I didn't know a lot about uh, the football unless the things that he was telling me I picked the Raiders as my team I say that to to Murphy my first day mail I give it all the story I'm not gonna tell you now and um, how and why I picked the Raiders, but because I born a Raider, was the me. And um, uh, it was all about uh, the, the thing he tell to me. So I know uh, about Refrigerator Perry, mm-hmm. Lawrence Taylor. I know about Plunkett and Stabler, John Madden, all that figures, you know. But it was difficult to see a game in Italy at the time. It was one game every Sunday on a channel of television, a random game. And then after, when the cable TV comes out in Italy, which was very late, I think it was 90 or 91, yeah. uh, then I have to go to a friend of mine, give him some VHS uh, that I was buying uh, to download, to, well, not download, to record yeah. the um, the games at the time, especially if they were rated well. And uh, I want to have my hero, you know. At the time, there were and just another person who was my hero, was Michael Jordan. But I need a hero from the NFL. I need a hero from the Raiders. And one day, I'll see Bo Jackson. And I see on a paper, and uh, I can't forget this moment, and it was a commercial. And I see the commercial on TV. And I go to my uncle. I said, uncle, 
Bo Jackson, I want to know about this guy. So he tried to provide me with all the information he can from from his ex teammate of the the the, uh, the squad and everything. And and that for me is the definition of coolness. I got a hero, and that was Bo Jackson. In my room, there were only two people, and there were Bo Jackson and Michael Jordan. Uh, probably this shitty. All right, so uh, Google Voice took him out. Uh, he called back. Uh, I'm going to address some of the stuff that he said. First off, Rico, man, cheers, brother. Um, I appreciate the uh, the uh, salute there, man. Uh, I appreciate the phone call, bro. Uh, I find it awesome, dude, that, you know, uh, me and Johnny uh, talked about it in the show earlier um, about how the, the promotional thing with the Bo Nose thing just kind of got his – you know, his persona out there. Everybody knew who Bo Jackson was. And you being in Italy when all this came out, seeing this and finding out about him, seeing the Nike commercial and that hitting you all the way over there, man, it just it just proves some of the things that we're talking about, dude. I love it, man. And yeah, Bo Jackson was was my hero as well. And I'm pretty sure I had some Bo stuff and some Michael Jordan stuff hanging up in my room around the same time there, uh, Rico. Let's get to the uh, second part of your call, brother. Yeah, so the boy kick in again. I'm going to try to be quick here. And um, that's it, man. The definition of coolness. Because there was no one who can be at the same level at him in the football. Nope. There was, I'm telling you again, it was just Michael Jordan in the basketball. Uh, what was about the football? And plus, listen, I was enjoying that video game when I was a kid. Tecmo uh, Tecmo Bowl. It was Bo Jackson. And for me, listen, trust me, for an American, it's going to be different. But for me, as living miles and miles from America, just having a piece, a little piece of Raiders, that was great. Great. And... Uh, and he's part of my life. Raiders are part of my life. My whole life went through ups and downs like the Raiders went. And uh, Bo Jackson's definition of coolness. With all that say, salute. Love you, Mojo. And I'm out. Raider born Rico. Thanks, brother. I appreciate the call, man. And yeah, the second half there, uh, more of the same. What I was talking about, dude, it's so cool that he was able to cross the continents, right? And, and and you felt that Bo Jackson stuff the way that we did. And it's just it's just a great story, man. I really appreciate you calling and giving us that, bro. Um, one more call, Rico. One more call, you triple OG, my man. Let's get to the next one, bro. Who we got here? Hey, it's your cop and the cute operator calling from the great state of Texas. Now, it's been a pretty crappy week. Let's go ahead and clarify. It's a pretty week. Um, capsulized by probably a nightmare scenario situation where we got San Francisco 49ers, if you can call them that, versus the Kansas City uh, Chiefs. Uh, no kingdom shouldn't it be achieved among. This is the worst scenario. I'm going to find myself not even watching the Super Bowl. All right, that's that's our capo. That's that's uh, Aaron the Q Dog Raider. Hey man, uh, I got to know what that music is in the background, bro. And uh, uh, I'm going to continue with the phone call. But yeah, I'm with you. I'm I'm not even watching the Super Bowl. Uh, that's that's my word. I'm going to listen to some Michael Jackson. <laughs> Michael Jackson. Good bullshit off the wall, baby. I mean. The 2019 season, Off the wall. I'm just going to call it what it is, man. Failure to launch. Uh, fourth and everything, throws out of bounds, spiked. I mean, you know, we shouldn't be that heavy-handed on our <sighs> extremely decent quarterback number four. There were more uh, shortcomings than that. I'm still, uh, you know, kind of. Picking up the pieces from uh, Brenton Buckner being shown the door, but you know, I can dig with Mary Nelly. Just gonna enjoy myself, man. And I will not be watching the Super Bowl because it sucks. And if you like the Kansas City Chiefs, you suck too. Word. Scott Steiner. Word. I'm just living off the wall, man. Living off the wall. Bro. 
I got I got a second call from the Capo, man. I'm feeling it too. I'm feeling Michael Jackson. Capo addendum. Yeah, this is your Capo and a cute already calling back for a part two and a silver lining to my previous call to the Mojo right. Pod show. All right. Um, it's taken the Kansas City Chiefs, Chiefs of No Kingdom, 50 years, I repeat, 50 years to make it to the AFC Championship game and win that game in order to go to a Super Bowl. So, you know what? I'm not feeling too bad about our Raiders and uh, our current condition and situation. Word. We got a new lot on life. We're going down to uh, the South Strip. We're going to get it done as a Death Star. And uh, this time next year, I fully expect for us to be in a position that those uh, mustard, mayo, and ketchup clad uh, football organization find themselves oh. currently. So I don't care about that. Another silver lining, if uh, we can call it that. Um, those tofu eating, uh, fair weather. Uh, Golden Dome with the white and red striped helmet guys that used to tout OJ as their future back. Uh, slash, slash, slash. But anyway, um, they're going to be able to at least silence the bandwagon uh, New England Patriot fans. And if they happen to win, and who cares if they do, but if they happen to win, they will uh, actually be six ring recipients. So that'll shut up Patriot fans. So I'll sit on the sidelines and ride this out, man. I'm going to holler at all the made men and women and hope to see everybody in Las Vegas for the draft. April 23rd to the 25th. It's a made man experience. Holler yep. your boy. Oh, and if it's possible, I like to make uh, bourbon reviews a weekly segment. Group. Group. Room, uh, I can't, dude. I, I'll I'll do a bourbon review once in a while, man. But my my wife is not gonna have me drinking bourbon once a week, bro. It turns me into a werewolf, just like my costume when I was eleven years old, Halloween earlier in the episode. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I feel you, dog. Um, I'm gonna leave it at this, dude. I'm not watching the Super Bowl. That's it. Not gonna do it. Um, not that it matters. Everybody else is going to watch it, right? Who cares if one dude that lives in SoCal is not going to watch Super Bowl, but it's my thing, man. I'm not doing it. Uh, the draft. Yeah, bro. I'm going to see you there. We're going to tear up the strip, bro. It's going to be our first Raider Nation, uh, in Las Vegas experience has made men. It's going to be awesome. Uh, thanks for calling Capo. You want, no, Hey, Capo. <laughs> you a triple OG dog? Let me hit that. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Triple O G G G G. Triple O G, baby. Thanks, Q dog. You number three, man. Always number one in my book. All right, last call. Let's see who this is. Let's go. Hey, Mojo, this is Houston Raiders Steve, the historian, Raiders fan radio. Uh, hey, Houstorian, Houston Raiders Steve. Man, thanks for calling, bro. It's the first time you called, man. I appreciate that, brother. I always like your takes, man. I like your. Uh, I like you taking us down memory lane. Onward. Listener. Hey, you got some great pod shows. I enjoy your interviews. I know a thing or two about beer and everything. I've got a... Uh, Plate, uh, Raiders plate down at the uh, Flying Saucer downtown Houston. It's a nationwide beer uh, place, drinking place. And also a Raiders plate over at the uh, Sugarland location. Sounds like my kind of place. I've, drink, I've had consumed whatever you want to call over 440 <laughs> beers, so I know my beers a little bit. <laughs> my favorites are the Chimay, uh, Belgian uh, Triple and the Quad, the Blue and the Red, and uh, the local breweries here in Houston. Um, Carbach and St. Arnold's is pretty good. We've got some other ones like uh, Eighth Wonder in their downtown. But I like the bourbon flavored uh, beers. The sippers is what I call them. The specialty beers that they put out, uh, you know, during the year and everything occasionally. Three or four of them. But uh, as far as my Raider experience, man, it's a whole bunch of them, a whole lifetime. Oakland Raiders season ticket holder 2012 to 2019. Um, I'm not going to be able to renew because of the cost, but I'll go to a game. Uh, here and there, um, occasionally. Big time Raider fan, as you know. And, uh, just enjoy my Raider family. No matter where they go, I'm always a Raider fan. Yep. Um, 
I go by the name, but not by the city. <clears throat> but I, you know, I understand what Oakland's going through. We lost the Oilers back when I was living here in Houston, and they moved to Tennessee. But that means we got to see more Raider games here in <laughs> Houston during the Los Angeles Raiders, Steve Wisniewski, Marcus Allen years, Bo Jackson years. But anyway, you got a great show, brother. I always enjoy it. I always listen to it. I'm going to share and like and subscribe to it. And uh, the Raiders are going to be back. I can't wait. The future looks bright. You got to wear shades. Ten buck three. Great show. <laughs> Take care and God bless. And I look forward to pod shows. Have a great day. Go Raiders. The Raiders are back, baby. Raiders. Raiders. Houston Raider Steve, man. Thank you so much for calling, brother. And yeah, man, let me see. How many? 440 beers, bro? Yeah, I like that Chai Mei too, man. That's that's some good that's some good brew, man. Um hey, yeah, hey, shoot me a message, dude. Shoot me a message and I'll see with Justin, my beer guy, if I can test out some of those beers that are local to you, man. Uh I'd 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 like to do that. So shoot me a message. Let me know what those uh some of those are, what you recommend, and uh I'll get it on the show, dude. Um, agree 100% man um, doesn't matter where they're at they could be on Mars Jupiter whatever uh, it'd be hard to play games there um, but yeah I'm, I'm always going to be a Raiders fan and we are back you better believe it okay guys that's the end of the show man um, I want to give some thanks I want to thank everybody that supported me up to this point I want to thank everybody that's watching my show. I want to thank everybody who subscribed and entered into the contest to win either the helmet or the jersey. Um, Please share this stuff. I want to give a big shout out to Raiders Fan Radio, um, Murph, Mosh, Swaggy J, all the made men. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Johnny, Just Win Johnny at OneNationFanWare.com. I also want to say that you guys need to uh, check it out, man. So check out OneNationFanWare.com. And pay particular attention to the Snake Stabler shirts, man. Those things are for a good cause. Uh, They go to the Stabler um, estate, who then uses that in the XOXO Foundation. Right now, their push is for head injuries in football, trying to eliminate those and do more research so that we can keep from getting kids hurt and maybe even keep uh, some of our favorite players on the field, uh, minimize some of these concussions and head injuries. So, Every time you buy a shirt from Just One Johnny with Snake Stabler uh, stuff on it, it is 100% donated to the XOXO Foundation for Snake Stabler and a head injury. So please do it. Shout out to East County Raider Nation. It's coming, baby. We're getting back together real soon, man. I know. <laughs> and uh, the draft. See you guys at the draft, man. Hey, until next week, Raider Nation. Just win, baby. Mojo out.